Was Martin McNeil about to get away with murder? That's what two unlikely accusers believe, his daughters. They say he killed their mother, and they've spent the past six years trying to prove it. From a suspicious nanny to an unnecessary surgery, the puzzle pieces they claim are finally in place. My co-anchor Dan Abrams brings us the latest compelling testimony for our series, Crime and Punishment. Do you recognize what that is, Rachel? Yes. And what is that? It's a picture of my mother. It was a dramatic moment in this five-day-old trial. Rachel McNeil called to testify against her once beloved and admired father, Martin, for the suspected murder of her mother, Michelle. Do you uh, recognize this man sitting right here? Yes. Who is he? He's my father. Sitting only feet away from him in a packed Utah courtroom, her voice unsteady, the shaken daughter talked about the man she once loved so much. How close would you describe your relationship with your dad growing up? Very close. And why would you say that? Um, uh, growing up, my father is my best friend. Uh, uh, very, very close to your dad? It's close to my dad, yes. Rachel and her sister Alexis have been on a six-year campaign for this moment to see their father, a doctor and prominent member of this Utah town, tried in connection with the death of their own mother. In fact, without their persistence, this case would likely have never come to trial. Ever since um, the day my mom died, I, I was concerned that my father killed her. And um, I've been fighting to get justice for this case uh, ever since then. He did not count on his daughters actually turning against him. He did not count on his daughters putting two and two together to get the answer of four, murder. But they did, and they never gave up. Prosecutors believe that in 2007, McNeil pressured his wife, a former beauty queen, to get a facelift, but with only one real goal in mind, to over-medicate her during her recovery and ultimately kill her. It was my father's voice. Rachel recalled the phone call from her father. Rachel, quick, get to the, get to the hospital. It's your, it's your mother, quick. McNeil and his lawyers insist Michelle died of natural causes. But this week, a parade of prosecution witnesses raised questions about McNeil's seemingly bizarre behavior the day of Michelle's death, including a 911 call where he claimed he needed help to remove his wife from the couple's bathtub. Okay, did, you, did you get her out of the water? McNeil sent his six-year-old daughter Ada over to the neighbors, Christy and Doug Daniels, to fetch help. So I went to the front door and it was Ada, and she just said, my dad needs some help. And he said he needed a male's help? That's what I remember. Christy Daniels says she then called her husband who came right over. I definitely could have got her out of the tub myself. A key point for prosecutors, trying to show McNeil was not trying to save his wife at all, and instead actually attempting to delay help from arriving. But defense attorneys dispute that, arguing that Martin McNeil had an injury and immediately did everything he could to save his wife. And the cops on the scene believed it was an accident. The medical examiner listed the cause of death as natural, but there was more they didn't know at the time. Twice he would say, why? Why would, why would you do this? All because of a stupid surgery. Earlier, the plastic surgeon who performed Michelle's facelift testified it was Martin, not Michelle, who seemed far more intent on the procedure. So much so that McNeil was even requesting the doctor prescribe medications beyond what was his usual practice. Why did you prescribe these extra drugs? Uh, that was because Martin indicated to me that he was very concerned about his wife, that she didn't handle pain well. Police never found those drugs because McNeil allegedly asked his son's girlfriend, Eileen Heng, to throw them out shortly after Michelle's death. He asked you to flush the pills down the toilet? Yes. Did that request seem strange to you? At the time, I, it did seem strange, yes. Something else that seemed strange? Within weeks of Michelle's death, Martin had hired someone to care for his younger daughters. But Gypsy Willis was no super nanny. 
She didn't do anything that I'd seen related to the children. And what did you see her doing? My dad was cooking. She was sitting there staring at my dad, things like that. I mean, she, the, the children were taking care of themselves. In fact, before her death, Michelle suspected Martin was having an affair with Gypsy and shared those suspicions with daughter Alexis. When Alexis objected to the family's new caregiver, Rachel says Martin took action. He said that my mother had thought that he was having an affair with this woman and that that was ridiculous and that if Alexis was going to be that way, that she was no longer a member of the family. One of the children Gypsy was supposed to care for, six-year-old Ada, plays a crucial role in this case. After all, it was the little girl who first discovered her mother's body. Prosecutors argue that was all part of Martin McNeil's plan. He physically showed step by step how he found my mother and talked about Ada first finding my mother. He Ada's said, testimony may also really poke like. a major hole in Martin McNeil's defense. Prosecutors say Ada recalled the crime scene very differently from Martin McNeil. He specifically said to me that he was concerned that there'd be a police investigation, that he didn't want it, anyone to think that he murdered my mother. It was so shocking to me. I said, why? Why would anybody think that? Why would anyone think that? You never said anything to Doug Whitney about your dad joking about being single at the... On cross-examination, McNeil's lawyer questioned Rachel's memory. I don't recall. Suggesting she's changed her story to make it more incriminating. All right. And even asked about her history of mental illness. And you've been diagnosed bipolar? Have I in my lifetime been diagnosed as bipolar? Yes. Yes. The defense insists McNeil has an alibi, that he couldn't have killed his wife, they say, because he was at a work event at the time. But prosecutors don't buy it, arguing that supposed alibi was just a part of Martin's sinister plan. At the event, colleagues say he acted strangely. Um, he told me he needed his picture taken. He was adamant. In the coming days, daughter Alexis is expected to be called back to the stand, and tomorrow, that infamous nanny, Gypsy Willis, is scheduled to tell her side of the story. Courts in recess. For Nightline, Dan Abrams, New York.